BCI is known as the Brain Computer Interface, which is a hot topic that is being discussed today. Well, not so long ago, Elon Musk, the CEO of the company Neuralink, demonstrated their experiment on a monkey who uses BCI to play video game called Pong and type just by using his brain and it went viral. Well, Synchron, a competitor of the neural link, successfully implanted a chip into a human's a brain for the first time in human history. There are various things that a computer interface could do, and the vision of these company are developing a BCI that could help human to calculate, uh, write, and communicate faster. But the main goals for now. Is that they want to create a device that can navigate and help people who need accommodations to see things if they were blind and hear better if they had hearing impairment, move better if they were amputated. And today I'm going to talk about the history of the BCI, and then we'll move to how we interpret it today. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the future of the BCI. When we are looking at the revolution of BCI, it's almost inevitable to talk about EEG. It all started in the 1920s. A German psychiatrist, Hans Berger, found out about electric waves among the human brain activity. At first, Berger was so unsure about his finding, and it took him over five years to publish his findings of records brain electric waves. In the nineteen twenty-five, he published the records that he found from using his EEG invention. However, it's not being widely accepted by the by his colleagues because they were skeptical about his findings, just like Berger himself. However, in the nineteen thirty-four, um, two of his colleagues confirmed his result, and EEG was. Being widely accepted by the scientists and doctors, and it was being used for diagnosis for epilepsy、uh, and schizophrenia,、um, for monitoring the electrical wave of the brain activity. This technology is being used for the same purpose until today. After human found out that the brain had electrical waves during activities. We could not stop wondering if there's anything else we can do with it. The scientists never stopped investigating further,、uh, more about the EEG. During the 1950s, the experiment began to uncope the relationship between EEG and the activities of the neurons. Therefore, a decade later, scientists are suspecting that by analyzing the brain waves. With EEG and decode the waves, we will be able to control a computer with it. In 1969, a professor of UCLA, Jack Vidal, demonstrated that people can guide a cruiser through the maze simply just by using one's mind. As the EEG wires attach to the scalp and sending waves to the computer,、um, It could, computer could decode it and change it to commands that a machine will understand.、Uh, Vidal coined the term brain-computer interface, and the concept was being introduced for the first time in human history. In the early 2000s, neuroscientist Miguel Nicolas, who is affiliated to Duke University, he and his collaborators published their studies on their experiment. By using the BCI, the monkey could control his own robotic arm,、um, and later on, it was successfully being conducted on hu- on human. Hi, I'm Nigel.、Um, I lost part of my arm in an accident at work a few years ago.、Uh, since then, I've been fortunate enough to be given one of these to try on. This is the B Bionic V3. It's a prosthetic hand, 
and it works from sensors on the inside and outside of my arms and muscle control. Yeah. We have a mouse grip. This will hold a mouse, single click, double click. And they're developing this now so that you'll be able to soon be able to drag and drop. After my last chapter, you must be excited to see what we have right now. Have you ever thought about using your brain to write down some words? Or have you ever thought about playing video games hands-free? As far as we are right now, the PCI technology has just evolved to the point that we're able to put chips in our brain. But in theory, we'll be able to do all of that but like how I addressed in the earlier chapter, the PCI technology itself is mostly focusing on uh, helping people who are struggling with disability. Even though we have invented a tons of technologies to, to help them, however, the chip form of the BCI has yet to become widely used. For most people who need accessibility, external devices are more common. One of the external devices is a hearing aid, and I was able to talk to Dr. Hogenberger, who's a professor of eye school in Syracuse University. She has been losing her hearing progressively since she was born, but luckily, she has still able to learn how to speak as a young child. But when she turned eight, um, she was diagnosed with hearing loss and ever since then, she started using hearing aids. Hearing aids we have for today, according to FDA, it's a device that amputates sounds for people that are having hearing loss. And there are different types of hearing aid, such as BTE, which is the uh, behind the ear, RIC, receiver in the canal, and ITE in the ear, and ITC in the kennel. While she was younger, she had to use BTE. BTE hearing aid that goes behind her ear with a big chunk. Uh, it was not easy to use, but uh, that was the best technology they had back in the day. But now, as the technology has improved a lot, Hamburger was able to switch from BTE to RIC. It's more compatible and it pretty much looked like a smaller AirPods. It's almost not noticeable when others talk to her. Even though there are incredible improvements for the technology, there's still a lot of advancement are left to be desired. Um, there's been incredible improvements with the technology of hearing aids, but what they can't do for you that I struggle with is they can't help with articulation and enunciation of what people are saying. So what the hearing aids essentially do is they are in making everything louder. They're increasing the sounds, but they're increasing the sounds of everything. So I still struggle in restaurants, parties, large rooms where there's lots of people. Um, I struggle a lot in classrooms because of the acoustics. And if someone is all the way in the back, it's really hard for me to comprehend and understand. So as far as the technology of hearing aids have come, there's still a lot that they cannot do. There, science can only go so far, pretty much. Hiyato, a patient who is suffering from ASL. 
amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, who also known as Logarek disease, which is a rare and progressive disorder that breaks down the muscle cells and weakens their muscles. Those who get this disease will eventually become paralyzed, just like one of the greatest physicists, Stephen Hawking. Luckily, Hayato is able to live in a world where technology is much more advanced than Dr. Hawkins lived in. The BCI technology has become so sophisticated that Hayato could control his robotic arms by using his mind. When Hayato lost his ability to move his arms and legs, he was able to wear a powered suit that would become controlled by the chip in his brain. Whenever he gives commands from his brain, the skeleton would start to move around, so Hayato would be able to move around, drink coffee every morning, and walk his dog in the afternoon, and even playing ping pong with his friend. Because the reflection of his exoskeleton is so fast that he can be his friend sometimes. Hayato could also talk if he ever lost his voices just by typing the word in his mind, but his voice would not have robotic sound anymore thanks to the AI learning. All Hayato needs to do is to record his voice before he loses the ability to talk, and the AI will recognize his voice and learn from his tone and his voice. And when Hayato needs to type by using the chip in his mind, the sound of his voice could come out by a device that translates his typed words in his mind into Hayato's own voice. The better this will turn out. All right, everyone, I've now switched my voice over. It very clearly just straight up sounds like Joe Biden, who is the current president of the United States. Now we're going to try all of these out. I'm very excited to see how they sound. Well, we'll use the record more mode for a live reaction here. But for now, I've just apparently switched my voice over to Barack Obama. As you can see, the only problem that BCI chipping his brain cannot be solved in is his facial expression. However, Hayato will wear an LED displaying half mask, and he can post emojis over his mask to show off more about his personality and express his feelings. Other than ASL, there will be more accessibility issues that BCI chips can solve, such as hearing impairment, vision loss, etc. The BCI could help people who need accommodation in a lot of aspect. Even though originally these devices are for people who need accommodation, due to the fact that the BCI technology could achieve so many things, like using a computer without using your hand, and you could still see things by imagining it, using the BCI to do math and it is going to tell you the answer. You could even communicate with BCI just like sending messages. People with different backgrounds and languages get to communicate better because of BCI can be their translator. BCI could also browse the internet, that being said, people can search anything just by thinking about it, which will make people become way more knowledgeable without learning anything. So a lot of people decided to turn themselves into cyborgs because they want to think better and become more knowledgeable. However, problem has been raised. There are people who do not trust tech giants, and they are skeptical about putting a chip that could be permanent into their brain because they believe that they will lose their privacy permanently if they were ever decided to put a chip in their brain, and they grant the access to another big organization that will breach their trust, like in the late 2010s. It's hard not to marvel at these companies and their inventions, which often makes life infinitely easier. But we've spent too long marveling. The time has arrived to consider the consequences of these monopolies, to reassert our own role in determining the human past. Once we cross certain thresholds, once we transform the values of institutions, once we abandon privacy, there's no turning back, no restoring our lost individuality. Which comes to the dilemma of the future, as if more people accessing the BCEI will somehow force others to do so as well, even if they are not willing to do so, because if they don't, they will lose the competition and might not be able to do a high paying job. Therefore, at that point, the world will become divided by the cyborgs and people who refuse to become one. There will be heated debate on politics, even riots 
or worse for such a significant change among human society. The way that BCAI has been evolving, we are soon going to achieve a future that our ancestors could imagine when they first found out about brainwave. Just like every other technology, we will benefit from the BCAI, but at the same time, they are also going to have to adapt to new tech, both socially and individually. Dr. Hochenberg said in the interview, there is always a gap between the medical community and the technological sciences. And it is also like La Burke Orson's speech, how technology moves society, not politics. Political revolution is outpaced by technological advancement. Therefore, society, or maybe politics, usually needs to be altered to accommodate the changes brought by technology. In 2055, the BCI technology will become more mature and you will be able to work like a cell phone or a computer. However, due to the different religions and belief systems, there will be people who are opposing the technology. There will be people simply want to use the technology so that they can have better computing power or control devices just by using their mind. There will be people who actually needed to use the technology to compromise their disabilities. This might be inevitable because when a snake sheds, they will have to endure pain for the change to become a better version of itself. Human society, just like a snake, changes will always create conflicts and eventually, just like snake, they either die from failure shedding or hopefully they survived and became a better version of themselves.